Our next matter is People versus Bobby Lee Johnson. Mr. Johnson is here with his counsel, Edwin Hedinger. Um, uh, Mr. Hedinger just filed an appearance and uh, substitution took over for Mr. Bush. And then Mr. George took over for Mr. Bush. And then Mr. Hedinger took over for Mr. George. So the matter was subject to a plea. I canceled the defendant's bond at the time of the plea. And uh, the matter was set for sentencing this morning. Mr. Johnson, you've been in jail for a few days now, which I think I hope you get your head on straighter. Uh, Edwin uh, used to see a lot of them, not so much anymore, but it's nice to see him. He is here on your behalf. And he's given me a letter that was provided by your daughter and a letter from your parents. Um, and again, I don't have a prosecutor here. These were two separate felonies. One was auto theft. And uh, that was reduced to attempted joyriding. And the other was a methamphetamine case, which was reduced to a use of methamphetamine. Um, so, Mr. Hedinger, what would you like me to know? Okay, good morning, Your Honor, and thank you. I'd like to start with the motor vehicle case because my client's not a thief. It did involve a stolen vehicle, but he didn't know that. It was a 23-year-old truck, a 19 or 2000 Dodge that he paid $800 for and did receive a bill of sale. You say did or didn't? He did. Yeah, we've been waiting to see it. We don't have it to show you, but I know his mother and stepfather in the courtroom saw it and would answer that way if asked. He tells me he has it and just can't find it. But I think the plea is appropriate. He got a benefit of the bargain down to the attempted joyride of the misdemeanor. But it's important, I think, for you to hear us tell you he's not a thief. He didn't steal the truck. The other case is possession of meth that he was charged with. And not a first one. It was a third offense. Clearly, we all know meth is one of the most addictive substances in the world. Once addicted to it, it's terribly hard to leave it. And I think that's evident in my client's life. That conversation with him, we're asking you to consider placing him shortly in the probation center so he can get classes, attend meetings, maybe get work release. And his stepfather, Randy, has told me he's got a job waiting for him. It's, if that were to happen. Which job? At Randy's farm. Okay. Now, who's Randy? Randy, can yeah. you help me out? Randy, what's your last name? Oh, he's okay. a lefty. Okay. Well, it's good to have friends here. Uh, okay. So, in my conversations with my client, he's indicated it's a difficult dealing with a mass addiction, which I understand because I do think it's one of the most addictive substances that exists in this world. It is. But I know that with help and commitment, he can turn his life around. And we're asking for that opportunity today. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, anything you want to say? Uh, yes, uh, I made, made a mistake, you know, like I uh, helped to get passes when my wife the class of your research probation center. He had a 
the warrant on the stolen truck had issued in May of 23, strike that, August of 23. And so there was an open warrant for Mr. Johnson when he got pulled over um, on September 2nd. And uh, then they found the methamphetamine. A question I had that no one has been able to answer for me is how much meth was there? Um, the report, I asked, no, the prosecutor didn't know and uh, Mr. George didn't know and he's not in the case anymore. But uh, I was hopeful to get an answer today that's the other one. Judge, it sounds like either between 12 to 15 grams. Okay, well, that's helpful. The, uh, the report indicates it weighed 16.8 grams. And, uh, but it also was a heavier weight breast milk bag with a pipe in it. So I wasn't sure how much of it was that and how much was meth. 12 to 15 grams is more than a little bit. Uh, Mr. Johnson has a long history of traffic violations, no insurance, improper plate registration kind of stuff going back more than 20 years. Uh, there's a million of, not a million, but there's, I don't know, 20 or more in here, starting at 2000 of varying traffic violations. So he buys this truck from some guy whose name he doesn't remember and he doesn't have a bill of sale and it's got no insurance and no proper plates and it's the same thing he's been doing for ever. And now he claims, well, I didn't know it was stolen. Well, it was, he didn't get a title. Um, he should have known it was stolen, um, which is the basis for the plea. Uh, there's no allegation that he stole it, but he bought it without a title um, and didn't get it titled and didn't get it insured and didn't get it plated. Um, I think you'd actually gotten your license back at that point. Were you still suspended on September 2nd? Uh -huh. I bought it since uh, you know last year. You got your license back. Yeah, I've had it since uh, my birthday last year. Yeah, so that was a plus. So at least you had a driver's license because you had a bunch of those. Um, regarding the meth, um, we've been down this path a bit. In 2014, filed 20 91 FY, you had a felony methamphetamine charge and file 20297 in February of 2020, you had a methamphetamine charge. In 2021, December of 2021, you had a methamphetamine charge. You have an unpaid fine and a no ops case that I said I was gonna take care of. You owe $375 or two days in a 2022 case and you never paid the fine reduced. I felt bad about that. They got a break. They cut you a fine. Judge Patterson gave you time to pay it. You paid none. I got to remember to take that, take care of that one. In fact, I'll do it right now. Failure to pay fines and costs on a no ops case. Reduced from a driving suspended, which is file. Two one two four seven six. You've been in since the nineteenth, so that's six days. I'm gonna give you six days credit. Six days. I'm gonna wipe out that fine. You didn't pay it anyway, so let's just take care of it this way. Concurrent with these other two charges. All right, we're going to run everything concurrently, uh, which I think is required anyway. 
on the methamphetamine charge, you got arrested on the second and posted on the fifth. So you have three days and the six days I just gave you, which is nine days credit or 99 days jail credit nine. I'm uh, not going to do work release or they tried drug court. They tried the probation center. This is a misdemeanor. I don't have the jurisdiction to put you in the probation center unless I did it as a work release and you're not presently working. I want you to just get some clean time, about 75 days worth. When I order fine and cost, you don't pay it. So I'm not sure what to do about that, but the fine is $75. There's a $75 crime victim's rights fee and a $50 state minimum fee. There is no attorney fee. That's $200. Payment due by February 1st of 24. There's a lot of meth. Your daughter's letter is quite touching. Nothing hurts more than a parent being taken over by a drug and feeling they love the drug more than their kids. I do not believe that long punishment will help him as much as rehab. Uh, guess what? There is no good rehab for methamphetamine. The relapse rate's about 90%. Mr. Hedinger hit the nail on the head. This is a very powerfully addictive drug. And uh, this is your third offense. And the prosecutor cut you a huge break by not making it a felony. They did it with the understanding, I think, that I was going to do some sort of a sanction. And this is it. You can certainly go to treatment when you get out. You can go to NA. You haven't done any of that while you were out. You had plenty of time. You could have gone to an NA meeting. You could have done anything, but you were still using at the time I canceled your bond. So this is concurrent with the auto theft, which is file 231580. Your parents also expressed their frustration with your addiction. We're going to get you some clean time. Methamphetamine is not like opioid addiction. People don't OD from methamphetamine. They decay. When you give somebody a lengthy sentence on an opioid charge and they get out, they've lost their tolerance. And we have, that's when people overdose after a rehab stint or after a jail sentence. You're not going to overdose from methamphetamine but I'm hoping that enough clean time will get you a head start. Mr. Hedinger's right. This is an old truck, 2000 Dodge. I'm not sure when it was stolen, but it was stolen. And you're driving around. It's not insured. It's not plated. You don't have a title. You should have known it was stolen. You just didn't want to know. Same thing, 99 days, credit nine, leaving 90 days to serve. Same thing, $75 fine, $75 crime, victim's rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee. That's $200. And that's due also July 1st, met February. That's not enough time. Let's go to April of 24. April 1st of 24. You've had six clean days, which is a good start. Gonna get about 75 more and that'll be an even better start. But you've earned these jail sentences. Again, it could have been longer than this. You can go to the officer. He'll be out in about 75 days, give or take. They'll calculate his good time. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Hedinger. It's nice to see you. My pleasure, Austin. You're always a perfect gentleman when you come down here.